Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Let's Play Stormblood. I apologize in advance because I think this episode is probably going to be on the lengthy side based on what I know is coming, so apologies in advance for that. So we need to break into a castrum and see if we can't disable these cannons permanently because we don't know how much repairs they have done in the meantime. We have gotten the answer of why they didn't continue firing upon us, but we have no guarantee that they're not going to continue firing upon us and their own men in the unforeseeable future, so... Well, one Imperial unit taken down. I've walked ten feet. Why do I have to deal with more so suddenly? I mean, like, they're not gonna keep this place unguarded or anything, but didn't you notice me, like, two minutes ago? <sighs> okay, I see my friends in the background, so... Hopefully that's enough of this. Where's Lise? Oh, but of course, there's more. There's always, always more. Alright, looks like I've dealt with all the patrols, and hmm, is this going to be our secret entrance right here? Alright, let's do this, and I really, really wish the game would stop trying to be so darn diegetic about this whole having to use the duty finder and recruiting people to assist us with the dungeons, because there's literally no freaking reason they can't themselves, you know? And I just, I really hate, I actually want, I want to switch to white mage for this. I really, really hate how they just keep, keep doing that. It's, it's annoying. It stopped being funny. Like, it was funny for a moment when it was, it was lampshaded on before. And Ellie's eyes like, yeah, right. Um, like that, that, that was relatively funny and that they keep trying to bring it up. Like, it's one thing if you bring it up in like the journal entries or whatever, but when you actually make it part of character dialogue, it just gets so old and annoying because why do I need to recruit adventure friends if the two of you are right here? Like, I'm not actually recruiting, like, finding a primal? Okay, I, I can kind of get that kind of joke, but it's just so frustrating. Like, I know they just made a plot point about they're, they're taking a separate route in. I entirely get that. Why can't you pretend one of the other Scions is with me instead? Where the heck is our, our involvement up to as, as of late? He hasn't been mentioned in, in several, several quests here. So, make it be him. Make it be one of the other background Scions or something. And even though Shadowbringers is going to see a release before this episode actually ends up airing, and please note that it has not, as of this point, that I am recording it, and the trust system in it is one of the things I am actually looking forward to about it, specifically for this reason, so... So, I have to 
to say I rather like the music in this place. And I, I do I do enjoy the aesthetics. Definitely so. It It reminds me obviously of the Praetorium, but for obvious reasons, but it also has its own different unique feel to it. So I absolutely very, very much appreciate that that the similarities are obvious for obvious reasons, but it, it's it's got its own touch and it's got its own its own style to it. And I like how the music compared to Doma Castle is just much, much more appropriate for, you know, the type of mission we're on. It definitely has that, that feel of, you know, we're, we're getting closer to the end. We're getting closer to, to the climax and, and the resolution of the story as a whole. But, but also, you know, invokes this, this, this undertone that, you know, we are sneaking in and in, in infiltrating this place. It's not, it's not an all-out assault, you know, where it's, it's not quite a stealth mission, but, you know, it's, it's definitely is in comparison to, to an all, you know, an all-out force and, and true invasion, if, if you know what I mean. So it's, it's that kind, it's that kind of environment and tone that I really, really like about this place. And also of note, is you can actually see at various points here and it's not quite obvious and it won't be until the final boss that yeah this place is partially outside you know it's not completely enclosed in like the praetorium was you know there there are beams of sunlight and, and stuff coming through the area and parts of this place it will even be outside as, as, as we see later And hopefully they haven't completely sounded the the alarm and, and no you know figured out that we're trying to create a diversion because between all of us creating a mess in here eventually they're gonna find out sooner or later what in the world we're up to and we can only hope that we keep them away from lease You know, I almost completely forgot about this part right here being being outdoors. It, it's worth noting that I often forget how much of this dungeon takes place on the outside because just just by sheer coincidence, I'm every time I get this dungeon in any sort of roulette or whatever, it's usually by ni at nightfall. So it's a lot harder to to see the the outdoors aspect of it. But um, we just hit morning dawn in in game time so like you can see see the arc all the way from here you can see some of their towers and it's it's that level of detail that again i i, compl I can completely appreciate it's not just like the regular topography like they've they've taken to an in, into account what kind of surroundings there should be here and i'm i'm, I'm not 100 percent certain if they're "Quote unquote," direct, directly placed, or if they're just just here as you know, like miniature landmarks to to make it more immersive. That I honestly don't know. I, I've never like superimposed a map of of these these places or anything of of that sort to 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 make such a kind of statement or or not, but. Definitely is something I enjoy.
So interesting display of some of their weaponry that I have not seen before. Oh good. Ring for my tank. Lovely. So the astute viewer would care to take notice of the fact that yeah, these are the same type of pods that we saw in a cutscene that Cryo has been held captive in. Now we as the Warrior of the Light are completely unaware of this at this time, but... And of course, now, by the name, we can get a glimpse of what happened to our birthday friend of the Goldfish Poop Gang of the expansion. Yeah, he's had some kind of messy, messy, messy treatment. Something done to him that made him act in such a behavior. And we did get a brief glimpse of it before uh, when Yotsuyu asks how he fares and you get a line about, you know, the procedure or something was, was a success. Now all those clues kind of get put together because that was not something really made clear to the player at that time. Uh, I suppose as early as you've seen the cutscene where where Fordola gets gets her treatment, you, you can really put start to put two and two together here. But here when you see the hypertunes in, in the capsules, you you can really just start to paint a better picture of you know, what happened What happened to him, what's been going on with Kryl, what Fordola may have, have gone through as well, even though you, all you get right now is that she's just undergone some kind of, of treatment, but it's, it's very easy to, to kind of ascertain that all of this is connected somehow. Again, the Warrior of Light themselves is not aware of this, and I don't know if it's ever mentioned in any sort of journal entry if if we're you know what we we just witnessed in that other room made some of the connections for us i i don't believe so but uh we'll learn some of these things soon enough so there there's honestly no need to but hey if you want to head cannon as your character has has figured this out by the time this happens yeah more power to you you have you have enough evidence to back that up you know So of course we have even even more of these and I've never actually seen a successful run where all four of them were taken out before the time limit. Typically it's two but I have on a small number of occasions seen three of them taken out. So if you've ever seen a run where all four of them have been successfully taken out it's way easier said than done because even though as you can see we have one person in here who's level 70. Um, this is something far easier said than done. So if you've seen it done, awesome. So before we head to our next boss, we have treasure chest to open. And thankfully, not well not thankfully, unfortunately, English is really hard when you're trying to speak off the top of your head. Uh, there is no goodies for us, but we did get some hides for some reason. And I regret not mentioning this several, several, several episodes back. And I didn't realize it till like an episode or two later. Um, in, in the quest where Alize and I are, you know, checking up on Imperials, be sneaking up and she randomly just kills a 400 pound tiger who just jumped out at her. Yeah, the quest reward for that is three tiger skins. <laughs> And I thought that was a really interesting touch because when I was looking through, like, basically, um, uh, the main scenario list, just basically getting a gauge for, you know, what levels I needed, I needed to be for, um, the, the, these quests, and I've tried to keep up, and I've had to do some leveling off screen to make sure I keep up because I haven't been doing any side quests or anything like that. I noticed that and I'm like, why the heck are they giving us tiger skins? And it didn't it didn't actually occur to me until like three or four episodes later that 
Derp. <laughs> So one thing of note is, now all of a sudden this pod is moving, and it will not move until after the boss fight is done. And again, it's, it's one of those just, just interesting back, background touches that, that I really can absolutely enjoy about the, the, the care and the time they've taken into a lot of things. And again, yet again, here we have another hallway that leads directly to the outside, and yeah, we can still see... Some of the background, and I think some of the rest of the, the castrum and such around here. So uh, it's quite a little different point of view, which which is really nice. And again, it's something I I very often forget about because just by sheer coincidence, usually it is night when I am in inside this place. Just just by by sheer happenstance, so I tend to miss all of this. Now this this hallway is is just simply nothing but All right, let's keep going. And suddenly we're plunged into into the dark deep dank darkness of the ceiling. I love how they have the street lamps in here too, even though they all by rights should be, you know, ceiling lamps, but no, no, they're they're street lamps, once again. And while I find that funny, it's just well, kind of wise reuse of assets, I I guess, you know. So I almost always forget that this boss for battle actually does take place outside. And here we see that pod that took off earlier. Don't know what the heck this thing is. And side note, yes, I am aware this is a Final Fantasy VI reference staring me in the face, but that's not what I meant. What in the world is this thing? I don't know what kind of creature or whatever the heck you have captured to turn into this, but I am... Certified freaked the heck out. Great, they fed it steroids or something now.
Well, that was an embarrassing, stupidly way to, stupid way to die. Um, got about a little knockback there, but that's okay. They got this. They got this. Avenge me, my random comrades. I was doing so great too. <laughs> I think I think it's just been a thing that every dungeon has to have some major blunder in it, but we just have to keep it for what it is. We're not gonna re-record these things just to make them perfect or anything like that. What did we get for... We got a new pair of bracelets, okay. Are you alright? Well, got knocked down a little bit, but otherwise, okay. Ah, I think that answers my question. We've accomplished our objectives as well. Lisa's unit should be advancing upon the fire control center in the command tower. Let us join them. So, we're not going to question that? Okay. Lise! Thank the twelve you're all right. Okay, I don't think now is the time for conversation. Glad to see you too. And you. There's the control center. Let's hit them hard and fast. Ready? You, wasn't it? Wasn't it? I, I gave the order to fire. It was over. The skulls had surrendered. No one else had to die. And you killed them. Your own people. Your own comrades. Well, to be fair, I don't think she knew they had surrendered, so. You're right. I killed them. Ansfrid, Rudolf, Emlyn, all the rest, trained and fought with every last one of them. Good soldiers to a man. I gave the order that led to their deaths, and I knew exactly what I was doing. But why? Why would you do that? They died so that all Alamegans could live free. That was all we ever wanted. We made a promise that we would do whatever it took, so that one day, one day, the Imperials would learn to accept us. But everything comes at a price. And if you haven't got the means to pay, then you pay with blood. Service guarantees citizenship, but citizenship guarantees not. It's not enough to do your part, oh no. You have to run faster. Fight harder, kill more and more and more, and only then will you be equal. That's just how it is out here in the provinces. You buy your freedom with blood. There is no other way. Shut up! 
Shut your mouth. You don't get to talk about freedom. You killed your own. They trusted you, and you killed them. Murderer! Butcher! Traitor! What the heck? Hacks. I know what you can do. I've already seen it. Alize. Oh, you're going to face hell for that. Even so, the odds are against me. <laughs> Coward! <coughs> Get back here! Where the heck did she go? you to join him for the royal hunt to be hosted at the palace you may bring your horde if you like all are welcome okay you were dangerously cl close to those propeller blades Is she okay She'll be all right, but we'll need to carry her. Will you help me? Now, one thing I've always wondered is... Has anyone played as a Lalafell? Does he say the exact same thing? Because if so, that is completely hilarious that he would be asking someone even half his size to help carry her. I've just always wondered that. Thank you. Lise, I leave matters here in your hands. Uh, right. So we're going to have to end this episode right here and we'll have to talk to Lisa after the fact. Let's just give her a moment to, to just breathe and just come to terms with what just happened here. So thank you for watching friends and I shall see you next time.